Hello, everybody out there. Happy Thursday, and welcome to another Stories, Inc. LinkedIn Live. My name is Bernadette Van Giesen, and I'm your host. Um, welcome. If it's your first time, if it's your 10th time, welcome. Welcome back. Uh, we like to host these sessions every other Thursday here on LinkedIn as quick bite-sized lessons about all things employer brand, employee storytelling, culture communications. Uh, today, we have a really special edition. We are celebrating our fifth year of doing Stories of the Year. So every December, Stories Inc., we celebrate some of our favorite stories from the year. So this year, we're celebrating some of the favorite stories that we've uncovered over the course of 2023. Um, and wow, what a year it has been. We have a really wide range of stories to share. And if you've been following along on our LinkedIn channel, you maybe have seen some of the first few. Um, we're going to continue sharing them over the course of the month. So please follow along there. Uh, but to help me celebrate this session today, we're going to be sharing some of those stories of the year. And to help me celebrate, we're going to bring in Stories Inc. team members who actually worked on these projects and helped bring these stories to life. So they're going to be able to share kind of some of their insider scoop, um, as well as what makes these stories really great lessons and how to do your own employee storytelling and employer brand content. So enough from me, we are going to jump into it. So we're gonna bring each of our team members in one by one and talk through these stories of the year. So please feel free to share your comments, questions in the comments and let's get started. So our first story of, story of the year is um, going to be introduced by my colleague, Shannon. So we bring you in here, Shannon. Hey, welcome. Oh, hi, hi Bernadette, hi everyone. Thanks Super for joining. Um, can you quickly intro introduce yourself to the audience here? Sure can. My name is Shannon Edwards and I am an account manager at Stories Incorporated. I've been on the team for about two years now. So super excited to be back. I was part of this last year. So excited to be back and share um, some new videos with you today. Yes. So this is a series that I'm super excited about and I, I love so much. So our first stories of the year comes from Stellantis and it was a part of their Meet the Makers series. Can you tell us before we show the video, can you tell us a little bit about Stellantis and what the series was all about? Sure. So Stellantis might be a name that's familiar to you or not, but I can guarantee that you have heard of some of the cars that they're making. So think Jeep, think Chrysler, and then go look up the rest of the cars because there's so many that they make. Um, but we were brought in um, to create this series, Meet the Makers, to really highlight um, the people on the floor, to highlight what these jobs are doing, um, what kind of career that you can have at Stellantis. Um, and the videos do just that. They celebrate um, the individual who we interviewed. Um, so really excited for you to see that today. Yes, we're gonna show that video. And as, as Shana said, it really shows kind of the full the full look of the person in these roles. So we're gonna share this stories of the year. Um, it features team member Michael Vasily. I've been here over 30 years now. And I, I'm a team leader on the Great Life. I'm grateful for my job. I provided for six kids. I've been married 23 years. And I have seven grandkids. Craig Line is the uh, jewel of the engine. It spins and the pistons go up and down. Because I came from transmission. When we got here, I asked them what the hardest line was. Where I come from, I was a case line guru. When I came up here, I wanted a challenge. I've launched seven different lines. Like the A-speed case, A-speed transmission and the expansion. Initially, you have a plant layout. You know where everything's gonna go. So as all the equipment's coming in, you know, you're coordinating with the vendors and the installers, and you bring in the electricians and they wire everything up. Once you bring it alive, it's like a Frankenstein thing. That's really exciting. Talking to different people, especially in the launch. Over the years, I've been to Germany three times. I've been to Italy once. I've been to Japan twice. Slantis has afforded me a really cool career, even though I'm an hourly factory worker. It's phenomenal. We'd work 10 hours, but on the weekends, I got to go to Munich for Oktoberfest. I got to see all the castles and then climb Mount Satyama, the second tallest mountain in Japan. I've experienced a lot of cool stuff. I never imagined that I'd be able to travel the world working for Stellantis. Love that video. <laughs> Um, can you, I know I have, I have ideas, but can you tell us all a little bit what makes this story a stories of the year? 
Sure, definitely. So, I mean, I think on the content side, right, we're getting to see Michael as a full person, which everyone's a full person and we want to see this authentic side to people, especially um, in our work environment. So we're seeing him as a full person. We're getting a glimpse into his life. Um, you see how he's been challenged in his career, how he's excelled in his career. We see his home life. We see he has kids and grandkids um, and see how, you know, ultimately how working at Stellantis um, has allowed him to provide a better life for himself and for his family. Um, and then I think on the production side, this was very fun to make and a lot different than maybe some of the typical corporate videos that you might see, um, mostly because of the rock music that um, you hear playing throughout all of the videos we created in this series, as well as just utilizing all of the B-roll and the different looks on the manufacturing floor. Um, really exciting, really bringing this video to life. Yeah, no, I, I love the B-roll footage. It really gives, when you think about it from like the talent attraction and just like celebrating the work that these people are doing, um, it just really brings that to life and it reinforces that these people are experts. There's, these are challenging equipment that they're working with. They really are the masters of their craft. Um, so I think that the B-roll footage and the visuals, it almost is like a character of itself in, in the video. Definitely. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much. We'll be linking in the comments if any, if you want to see. This was one of, I think, 28 videos that 31. were made. 31. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> um, this is one of 31 videos in this Meet the Maker series. And we'll link to Stellantis' YouTube if you want to see them all. That's a really, really amazing series. Um, thank you, Shannon. And congrats on contributing towards the stories of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that was a great one to kick us off. Um, our next stories of the year is a little bit of a different look as all of these videos are. And to introduce it is my colleague, Anna Lippi. Hey, Anna, Hi. welcome. Hi, Thank you. Hi, Bernadette. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Can you quickly introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Anna Lippi. I'm the director of customer success at Stories Inc. So I have the pleasure of um, kind of helping over or co-overseeing our project team, making sure our team is everything they need to be successful um, and love getting to know lots of our clients and seeing a lot of the amazing work um, that we've produced this year. Yes, and really, yeah, amazing work. Um, so our next Stories of the Year, which I know is a project that you have a hand in, is from the uh, gaming company Demonware. So can you tell us a little bit about who Demonware is, who Demonware is what they do, and then kind of set us up for this project a little bit? Absolutely. So Demonware is a global video game studio. They are part of the larger Activision Blizzard umbrella. Um, and they really run every part of the player's online experience. So from logging in to ranking winners to data storage. So pieces um, of the experience that you know might be more behind the scenes and more technical, but are still really essential for the players and the gamers to um, enjoy the game. So, yeah. yeah, see a little bit of a theme here with even like the Meet the Makers kind of series that it's like honoring this work of people that you maybe don't immediately think of when you think of a wildly popular video game. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're without further ado, let's pull up this video. The most recent project that I was super uh, proud and thankful that I got to work on was the launch of Warzone. That was a transformative project for the Call of Duty franchise, and Demonware played a major role in it. The challenges are is that you have a game with, that will have many millions of players, and that is going to launch on a date, and that is coming for you. Modern Warfare 2019 brought with it crossplay for the first time in the Call of Duty history. And the untold story of the crossplay challenge for Demonware was a challenge of scale. I would say the cross-platform and cross-title progression is definitely something I'm very proud of. Being able to have a continuity of your data from one platform to another allows the player to play in different platforms without having a restart. In order to make it happen, we re-engineered every layer of the stack to be more tolerant to the expansion and scale. And we did so in record time. And it was a grueling 18 months, but we pulled it off. And then that led straight to Warzone. And Warzone 
launched in March of 2020, when the entire world was told to go home and find something to do. Well, guess what they did? They all downloaded Warzone and they all started playing Warzone. And that was the most exciting seven week period of my entire career. So good. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what makes this the stories of the year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I loved that we used um, kind of that prompt of what projects are you most proud of. Um, and I think this this short video accomplishes a lot. So it points to what makes working at DemiWare unique from the mind boggling challenges of scale, cutting edge technology. So you heard um, the storyteller talk about crossplay for the first time in the game's history, talking about the continuity of data from one platform to another. Um, and then there's sort of that deeper feeling of finding meaning that your work matters. Um, and it also touched on collaboration. So how a project of the scale just wouldn't be possible without the full team's effort. So in a short video, we really um, accomplished, I think, a lot. Yeah, so many things. And kind of what you said at the top there, like it's always been one of our favorite interview questions of what are you most proud of? Because it really kind of pierces to what matters most to the storyteller. And so that's just kind of a tip for someone out there. It's a really great question to ask that gets these specific, really important projects that people are really proud of. And so it's like some of these people, their technical job title might have equivalents at other companies, but it's like when you look at what makes being this job at this company, these are some of the things that are really unique about working at Demonware. So you get these like the ability to work on global games, the ability to have the challenge of something that's millions of people are going to download simultaneously like that's a really really unique technical challenge and um, so that's people yeah totally to your point like people really light up also when you ask them that question like what are you most proud of it's a really like deep meaningful question i um, mean people can and storytellers can really open up about what specifically has given them a lot of pride uh, and that generally elicits a response that's like really compelling to hear and to listen to um, and in this case like i think many of us even if we're not technical ourselves, can kind of relate to a big project or um a project that we really hustled on and then had a you know a huge impact so i think it's a great question yes and a great video awesome well thank you anna and congrats on contributing towards the story of the year thanks for having me nice seeing everyone okay so two wonderful videos there um so thanks so much for the team for joining us so our next stories of the year that we are talking about today is going to be introduced by my colleague christy Hey, Christy, welcome. We got our matching green festive sweaters on. I know I was going to compliment you on the color of your sweater, but <laughs> then that's sort of complimenting myself and I don't like to do that. <laughs> um, but yes, hi everyone. I'm Christy Coluccio and I, like Shannon, I'm an account manager. Um, I've been with Stories for about two and a half years and in my role, I've really enjoyed being able to partner with our clients, um, which is the main thing that I do now, but really uh, working with our creative team to bring those stories to life. So excited to be a part of this presentation today. Yes, thanks for being here. So our next stories of the year is about the um, technology company Dropbox. So can you tell us a little bit, this was a really unique project, I think a really unique use case that I'm really excited about, but can you tell us a little bit about who Dropbox is and what uh, this project was all about? Sure, so Dropbox, um, many of you may use it, but it's a the Dropbox is a leading provider of cloud storage and content collaboration tools um, with an emphasis on both individuals and small and medium uh, businesses. So the company was really a pioneer in cloud storage and um, cross-platform file syncing. Uh, so since the pandemic, Dropbox moved forward with a virtual first culture shift. So they moved their uh, workforce to be uh, you know, all remote. They closed some of their offices. And it, by doing so, it enabled them to shift their recruiting to not just a recruit in the you know, Silicon Valley or Austin hotspots, but they they could recruit from anywhere. Um, so since they could now recruit people from anywhere who possibly didn't have um, experience working for one of the large technology uh, giants, 
they wanted to create some videos that would give uh, these maybe non-traditional uh, candidates more insight of what the interview process looked like at Dropbox. And so we helped them create a series of videos uh, that, you know, helps the candidates understand the interview process better. Um, yeah. yeah. It's really, really interesting. And one thing, and I'm, I'm going to kind of screen share in a second, but um, like, I think when you think a lot about the employee storytelling videos that we create, and of course they're used throughout the whole life cycle, but a lot of times they focus on that top of funnel or your internal comms and you're kind of nurturing the employee engagement, but that kind of bottom funnel when someone's getting ready for their first interview is sometimes, and I don't know if we're always creating a ton of content for that. So it's like to have something that really speaks to that candidate right when they're getting ready for their interview, keeps them engaged throughout the interview process. Um, I also think that has a lot of positive ripple effects too, that it's like they're more prepared for the interview. Um, they are more likely to put their best foot forward, which of course is great for the talent acquisition team at Dropbox. Most definitely. And I learned a lot in talking to uh, these insiders who were also part of the interview process in many cases, and even part in the development of some of those you know, specific types of interviews. So it was really good to get their insight into what you know, what it takes to be a successful candidate for, you know, in this particular interview. And um, I really think that having that insider knowledge is going to be really helpful for people who are going through that interview process at Dropbox. Yeah. So I have a screen share here and I, I also really love how Dropbox is using it. I think it's just being very transparent and bringing this information to the forefront. So on their career site, they have this button here, researching for my interview. It's super clear. If you're researching for your interview, you know this is for you. Um, and then when you click through and scroll down, they have a ton of resources here, including your engineering interview prep. So exactly here that it's like, if you're coming in, you're interviewing for an inter engineering position, you have all of this insight around each step of the interview process. So your all around interview, your coding interview, your deep dive, your architecture. Um, I don't know, Christy, if there's anything to add here, but I just love just bringing this information to the forefront, making it super accessible for non-traditional or traditional candidates. Yeah, I not not too much to add other than I learned a lot about the interview process and you know at Dropbox, but I really think that it's great that they want to bring in talent from anywhere. They want to bring in non-traditional talent and I really do think that this gives people, you know, a better insight of what it's like to work for and succeed at Dropbox. Dropbox. Absolutely. So we'll we'll link to this in the comments if anyone wants to go in and watch the videos. So the story of the year is kind of awarded to the campaign in general because it's a really smart use of employee stories, employee videos to really talk to an important part of their candidate process. Um, so awesome. Let me. OK, well, thanks for joining us, Christy. All right. Thank you. All right. OK, so next our next stories of the year. I am pleased to welcome back my colleague, Shannon. Hey, hey. Hello again. <laughs> welcome back. Um, so our next stories of the year comes from the financial credit union company, DCU. Can you tell us a little bit more about DCU and give us an overview of this project? Sure. Um, so DCU, also Digital Federal Credit Union, um, they do personal and business banking, and they're located primarily in New England, although they have employees all over the country. Um, this, this project, this is a return client. Um, we've worked with them prior and before the pandemic. So when we worked with them this time, it was really a refresh of of the content that they needed and what the culture was looking like now. So we'll talk a little bit more on uh, the back side of it, but that will give you a good glimpse of what this video is looking like. Awesome. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of a teaser. So this video is also, um, you know, I think a, a, a big question candidates have right now is what does work look like? Or am I in person? Am I remote? Am I hybrid? What does that mean? And this video addresses that question. During the 
COVID years. When the branch was shut down, DC found a way for all of us to stay working. They didn't lay anyone off or anything like that. One of the best days in recent memory is the first day that we welcome people back to the office in a hybrid work model. The energy in the building that day was very interesting. Folks were excited to come back to an environment where they could see their friends and get back to some sense of normalcy. For our hybrid work schedule, we are required to be on site five days a month. That's for certain positions, not all of them. The Information Center since 2020 has been 100% virtual. What that's allowed us to do is to start recruiting outside of the Massachusetts and New England areas. By offering a remote environment, we're able to look at talent outside of just our local area. I am remote, but I do come into the office once in a while. It contributed to better work-life balance and more satisfying because you can balance out both sides. I would definitely rate it very high working from home. At the same time, I am available to be in person when the situation needs it. We're in that hybrid setting. I look forward to bouncing ideas off of people. That's just not when we're in person. I can reach out to some folk like, hey, I have an idea. Do you have 30 minutes on this day so that we can try and test it out? I come in to the office two days a week and then I'm at home three days a week. So it's a very nice flexibility. I actually just got a puppy a couple months ago, so it's been super nice to be able to be with him and help out my family as when I am at home, but also come into the office and still have that communication and collaboration that we get from one another that typically you don't see when you're just on a screen full time. We have tools, we have techniques, we've built some very solid relationships I would have to say that the biggest thing I look forward to the most when I log on each morning is seeing my team. Every morning, we do a 15-minute stand-up where we can see each other's faces, we can connect, we can maintain those meaningful relationships. I brag to some of my old consulting partners that my year at DCU, I've established such solid professional relationships, more so than in any of my years prior to, that just, I think... Okay cut it off there, but um, I think it's a really informative video. Shannon, can you tell us a little bit more about what makes this a Stories of the Year? Absolutely. I really love this video. I think there's so much good content in it, and every, every company has a style, right? Whether they're hybrid, in-person, all remote, and this is what candidates are looking for. It's one of the first questions I'm sure many people are asking when they go to job interviews. So super important to convey whatever that is at your company. Um, and then in this video, all the specifics I love. So, you know, it talks about the return to work and what that looks like. We go, um, we talk, we look a little bit at each of their lives and why it's been important to them. Oh, I got a puppy. Oh, you know, I benefit from working at home. I'm able to get things done. But also this is why it's important for me to be in the office. So I love that this video, um, you know, includes both sides of the coin. Um, and, you know, we learn also how in this virtual world, they're still able to stay connected, which is also important. Um, you know, they, they mentioned their 15 minute stand up call in this video. So I just thought it was unique that we got to hit it from every single angle of why um, in person work is great, why, um, why at home work is great, and why this hybrid is really working for DCU. Yeah. Um, yeah. You said that great. I really, nothing to add. I, well, maybe one thing to add that, that I think just being specific and being clear just goes so far with candidates that, like you said, it's like, just give every company has its own style. They have their own policies and that's great, but just give the candidates the information that they need to, to opt in or out and say like, okay, this could work for me. This couldn't work for me, but just all the specific details and all the information in a video like this just shows that DCU is you know proud of their culture. They're proud of what they're doing They're This is, you know, do you want in or do you want out <laughs> kind of, kind of thing, but it's very clear and actionable for talent. Definitely. And at the end of the day, you know, we're doing these for recruiting reasons, but we're also trying to find the right fit for you, right? We want you to retain the talent that you have. And I think, you know, all of these videos are a good example of getting the correct candidate. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, Shannon. Thank you. All right. Last 
but certainly not least, is um, my colleague Taylor to be joining us to introduce our last stories of the year that we're talking about today. These are not all of our stories of the year, but the last one that we are talking about on our session today. Hi, Taylor. Welcome. Hi, Bernadette. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here. This is my first stories of the year. Yes, first stories of the year, and I believe first time making an appearance on a LinkedIn learning session. So yeah, welcome. this is a double. This serves as a double whammy. <laughs> yes. Can you um, kind of quickly introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah. So I am a content strategist here at Stories. And so essentially, I'm boots on the ground. I'm the one that's interviewing the storytellers. And then from there, I take what I've gathered and I translate that visually through video or sometimes through print, through blogs, et cetera. Awesome. So our next and final for today, Stories of the Year, comes from the company Colgate Palmolive. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about the organization and then what went into this project? Yeah, so I think to put it in simplest forms, uh, Colgate is an innovative growth company and they're constantly redefining and reimagining a way to create a healthier future for pets, people, and our world, and it's reflected in the output of their products. So you think about skincare, you think about pet nutrition, oral hygiene, and that's just to name a few. And it was really exciting to partner with them this year. We got a range of themes. We talked about digital transformation, innovation, global impact, and the foundation of the company and what they value, and that's ultimately caring for all. So it's no secret that we did a diversity, equity, and inclusion video. And I just think that Colgate just has this understanding of when we're thinking about, when they're thinking about messaging and product outputs, they are bringing their perspectives to it all. And that ultimately stimulates creativity and innovation. And they can actually see a healthier future for all because all ideas, all perspectives are welcomed and everyone has a seat at the table. Awesome. Great lead in. So yes, we're going to share uh, a diversity, equity, and inclusion overview video that we created. Um, it was a longer video, and just for the sake of kind of our session here, uh, we trimmed it down ever so slightly. But we are excited to share these stories today. You built an environment where everybody feels they have a seat at the table. And not only can they sit at the table, but when you're at the table, you're actually expected to participate and speak up. Then magic happens. We're long-standing partners with the Consortium Graduate Management Studies, and it helps to get underrepresented minorities into business school. That's how I kind of even interacted with Colgate. I met them at this conference, interviewed, and just fell in love with the office, the people, the culture, the environment. Now that I'm on the other side, I'm so excited when I get to go and represent Colgate. It just means so much to me to be able to give the same opportunity to other students that look like me. That's been really great. Colgate Ability Network is an organization for people with disabilities and we all come together to bring awareness within the company and to make the employees who have disabilities understand the resources that's available to them. Colgate over the years have built an accessible bathroom for me. They put power doors on my floor so I could access the glass doors when I come into the office. Colgate has made me feel welcome. Bringing my authentic self to work means that I am able to express myself freely without having to be judged. I was born and raised in India. I have henna on my hand. I think being authentic is really celebrating who I am and my background experience. They encourage us to be us. Don't worry about who you are, from where do you come from. Here, I feel I can bring my true personality. So I'm always laughing and talking and bringing, of course, the results. One of the ways that Colgate allows a sense of belonging is just simple events like the Pride Flag Raising Ceremony. It gives people that are part of the Colgate community something to look at and say, look, this company has my back. It really gives me a lot of pride because the company really does support all employees and allows us to grow individually as well as be able to bring in what's important to us at a personal level and bridge that with our professional careers. Okay, we'll end it there. But um, I, I think I know what makes it a great video, but Taylor, can you tell us a little bit about, about what makes this story of the year? 
Yeah, I think we see Colgate Palmolive really walks the walk. And I think we notice too often in diversity, equity, inclusion videos, they'll take a broad sweep across the many ways that an employee can identify with the organization. But I think this video in particular hones in the specificity and celebrates the different populations at Colgate. I mean, we even see with Chelsea and she's talking about being early careers and finding her footing and we hear about Jeffrey and his experience with inclusion as a person with disabilities and Nicholas with um, the pride flag raising ceremony, what meant to him. We just really see that people can find their home here at Colgate Palmolive. Yes, and then kind of what you said, walking the walk that I think also you see the different ways kind of the organization backs the support too. So it's like you're seeing them investing in this partnership that tries to get um, underrepresented groups into business schools. So it's like, that's kind of uh, investing in diverse pipelines. And then you see the ERG supporting the inclusion of team members. So it's like kind of providing that organizational support through the ERGs and then these events that have made a really personal impact. So it's kind of like three different organizational ways that they're kind of providing the, the foundation and the resources for then the culture to be able to blossom from there. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Taylor, and congrats for contributing to a Stories of the Year. Thank you. Okay. Well, that kind of wraps us up for today. I'm going to actually bring everyone back in here just to close us out. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. This was another really great Stories of the Year session. Um, everyone joining us out in the world, um, thanks for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed this session. Thanks, everybody. Have a happy holiday. Happy holiday. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.